Okay, so like I said last time, uh, we did our games last week because we needed some more time to work on this uh, conference companion. We're actually going to enter into the SHPE um, conference. Uh, it's basically just a, it's like a career expo. It has a lot of like other other uh, session tracks and stuff and, and talks. A lot of people are going to be in. Um, it's going to be a pretty cool event. We're going to go in August, I think. Um, and we're, basically our goal was to make an app that you could use at the conference. Something that would um, allow for allow for offline access and allow for uh, it, uh, like a non-stack. We wanted to make something like new a new UI that we haven't made yet. So far, we've been using Blink table views and Blake's static views that just get loaded in very easily. This time we wanted to use core animation and uh, we, the, we did that through open, this open source framework called FTUtils. Um, we also, for the offline access, we used the data, NS data store um, for persistent store. And we actually had to write a custom API just to download everything from the, uh, from the website. This is, a, this is just a look at the database we had to create for just the iPhones, just so it could download all the, all the information for the conference uh, on the first load and save it so that they don't have to log in every time or like refresh it or be connected to the internet. Um, this is also the first project we use using Google Code. Uh, you can go ahead and check us out if you want. We're right here. I don't know how else I can give you guys the links, but if you want it, you can follow us. I'll post the slides if you send them to me. Cool. And then uh, you guys can check out the code and look at it if you want to like mess around with iPhone code. You can check out that too. You might not want to look into the FTU till stuff because that's kind of uh, not really standard, but that's what uh, Alex has been working on, so we'll let him talk about that for a second. Okay, um, so half the project is we're using two different kinds of uh, animations. Most of it is FTUtils that's uh, extra more uh, like poppy kind of things, like popping in and out, dissolving, things like that, um, checkerboard dissolve. Um, Xcode and the um, SDK that it comes with the original iPhone does not allow you to do things like that. They usually just have like slide up, slide left, slide right, flip, just boring stuff. So um, FTUtils allows us to, once it's implemented, to use um, a lot more fancy, I don't know, kind of attention grabbing transitions, which uh, hopefully you'll be able to tell in, in the demo. All right, so let's move the demo real quick. Um, Start the scratch you can do that. Did I oh, wrong way. I had the same problem last time. Is it yeah. this one? The next one. No. One more. Ah. Uh, Don't worry so, about the So this is our like uh this is our basic UI that we just made. It's going to be updated. We have until August to make it look nice. We finished the API. So right now what it's doing is connecting to the, the website and pulling the information from the, from the uh, database in an XML format. Um, we had to make a custom, custom parser for this and custom API to access it all. Uh, we wanted to be able to download it all at once. Initially, the, the guy that we were working with, he had it so you had to download it as you moved into conference and, and session and things like that. Um, but we finally got into make it so you can open it up and look at it uh, or get it all at once. So most of the most of the classes in here are not full, yeah. um, but we'll show you what they do have. The only one that is full is actually the first one because I guess we're just it's kind of like a test base, so we're kind of just filling it with what we at least got. So um, first, uh, like the whole the whole. Um, thing is like the transitions you see there are all the core Xcode, but things like popping out like that, that's not. That's all um, open source um, types of transitions. Um, all the data is pulled from the server and then passed into the different views. So this is all actually pulled from uh, the original, this view right here. It's all pulled from this one. And then it gets passed in and then it gets populated here. Um, it's not very descriptive. Like uh, the bottom one is actually this is a scroll view, except there's not really a description there, so it makes it kind of difficult to show things. Um, this is a, a venue. Um, it'll show like the description. I guess you can't really see it because the light is all weird. But um, if you turn the lights are on the side. Oh. 
feel like. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this pull. This is from uh, when it when it initially grabs all the information and puts it in the database. This needs to be fetched from the database. So it does it all pretty quickly. Uh, again, this is just our intermittent UI. We're not really looking to uh, impress you guys with the UI right now. This this is blank because the information is blank on the, on the server. Um, but we're not even sure how we want to show it yet. But we know that we now have the tools to use core animation and um, and core data to static or to to hold all the data. We've the also got a, um, right now we implemented the mail, which is actually uh, took me I don't know ten lines of code. Because all it does is it'll pull the email address from the actual ob conference object, and then it'll pass it into this as a two recipients um, array. And then it just gets passed into the actual um, API for it. That's it. Any questions? Yeah. Do you guys have Do you guys have the map implemented where it pinpoints all the drops on the map? No, we got the locations in the database, but we haven't done the map yet. And is this posted on the App Store? No, not even close. It's, 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 it's oh, they, I guess they regulate at home, right? No, they let you. I, I can, I'm going to post it on the App Store, but right now it's just on Google Code. Yeah, okay. gotta have to, it has to be done. Yeah. yeah. Um, you said you access the classes from the, I guess, the views in the iPhone. Is it, yeah. is it a pain in the butt, like an Android, to pass around like classes and synchronize things? I don't know how the, how, I'm really honestly not familiar with the, I didn't see how the Android does it, but the way that we'll do it is like, a, there'll be a new view that's coming up, and we're doing a knit, a knit with like a venue ID, and then it'll it'll literally just pass, it's simple, actually. It just yeah, passes it the class, or does it just pass the whole thing? like the next view or? It passes just the, that one instance of the class. So that list of venues that it was on the left side, you press one venue and it passes just that one venue uh, object into the, the next view. And that one view loads all the same venue, it's the same template, it just loads a different data. So you didn't have to implement like a serialization of, the, of that class and you just pass no. it and it goes. Yep. Um, so my quick answer for Google Android is that um, it's, there's a functionality already to pass data between things like these classes. However, there can be some limits on some. So you've got to watch out for some. If I want to do a different conference, what needs to be set up? So I want to reskin yours, and I want to generate the database, I guess, that you access. Uh, we just have to change the classes that are in the database and restructure the database. It's all in place now. Like we set, we set up the model. So now we just got to restructure the model for a new conference. And what if you wanted to add things like video links? The, some of the talks were videotaped and then you can put them in, in there. We would have to add another uh, attribute for the conference or whatever. Yeah. If it's a, if it's a speaker be, link or a session link. It'd be a really heavy download though. Because right now we have it to where it's downloading everything all at once. Right. So if it doesn't yeah, like... It would be lots of videos. It's, I, I think, think it just downloads a lot of... Unless it's like, if it's like a YouTube link, I think we would just pull up the YouTube app and do that. It just depends on how it's going to be displayed. All right. Group two, you should have already